How many would like to get whatsoever they ask? Come on, we know, we know Brother Kenneth Hagin's senior scripture. Mark eleven twenty two. For whosoever, whoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be cast into the sea, shall have whatsoever he saith. Now, if that scripture must come to pass right now, we will have a lot of condemnation, judgment in the church. So we will not preach on that one, you know. Okay, anybody sharp with minds? I mean, if that scripture must come into fulfillment now, imagine with how many stuff you have been speaking lately. I mean, just imagine how many people will just be condemned if, we, if it will come true. So we'll touch on another whatsoever. In 1 John chapter 3, verses 19, 20, 21, it's an awesome portion of scripture. He says, beloved, beloved. How would you love God to call you beloved? He's just called you that. Beloved, if our heart condemn us. Because I heard you preach about that. No, you haven't. God spoke to me in 1983 and said, if you ever said I heard that, you rob yourself of revelation and of revival. But if every time you hear my word and say, wow, I'll bring you revelation and revival. My wife once got the revelation. She said, why does God bless Kubus with so much revelation? Because he keeps on giving and it's always new. If our heart condemns us, God is greater. Amen. Mathematically and scientifically. God is greater than our hearts. If my heart condemn me not, then have I boldness towards God. And what so ever I ask, I receive. Amen. Come on, church. I've just written three words on the board that we're going to look at a little bit tonight. My heart, condemnation, and boldness. Those are the three ingredients involved to make you either receive or either not receive. If my heart condemn me, God is greater than my heart. If my heart condemn me not, then have I boldness toward God. And whatsoever I ask, so I can say, lady, there with a crutch, three years in an accident, stand up, throw your crutch away. No, throw it away. No, throw it away. No, throw it away. Now walk. So I ask, let the cripples walk. He said, whatsoever, my son, whatsoever. All you need is boldness. Not arrogance. Amen. Arrogance. In the name of Jesus, I now take authority over these people and I say every demon is now out and the city now belongs to me. But your church has got 20 people. If you are arrogant, God doesn't work with arrogance. God works with boldness. And the boldness is because of something where my heart is involved with something that comes from Almighty God. Yeah. Jeremiah 17, are you ready? Verse 9. Yes. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? The Lord searches the heart. Close your Bible. Your heart is wicked. <laughs> Deceitful above all things. So if you listen to your heart, it's going to condemn you when you want to do and get something from God. It'll always tell you, you didn't perform right. You didn't give right. You didn't pray right. You didn't fast right. You were not in prayer before the meeting. You, you, I, I didn't have time to pray for this meeting. I was talking to the people. Okay. So if the miracles depended on my prayer, not one would have been healed here tonight. So I didn't spend time in the presence of God to get the sick healed tonight. I used a word that says... Get away from the condemning heart and get boldness to God. And the boldness to God will get you whatsoever you ask. Yeah. 
But how can I get away? Your heart, if you listen to your heart, it'll always tell you. Remember last Sunday's message on fasting? When last did you fast? Now, if you fast out of rituals and out of legalistic ideas, your fasting will not bring you anything. If you pray to impress God, your prayer will not give you anything. The Bible says in Hebrews 6, I told you that before tonight, God, because there was no one greater, became the sole agent in swearing by himself that I want to bless you. So why do you now want to get involved if God was the sole agent? Come on, church. When Abraham thought God wasn't the sole agent, he got Ismail, and we're still struggling today. You know, just because he thought God wasn't the sole agent, God said, no, Abraham, in blessing, I will bless you. But if you want to be involved in this thing, we're going to get some Ishmaels here. And the Ishmael is going to give you trouble and their mothers even more. <laughs> so get Hagar out. Get rid of the slave woman. Get rid of the slave son. Because I want to bless you, child. That's why Jesus had to come and leave us a testament that we don't have to struggle with the covenant. Because the covenant is if I do, God will do. The testament says he died, I receive. So God made a soul thing. That is, he became the soul. Not S-O-U-L, S-O-L-E. Soul, single party. And says in blessing, I will bless you. So if I must be involved in miracles, every single person will die that we pray for. Right, let's try and get. Have your heart condemned you lately? Come on, all ye holy saints. Have you prayed and said, dear Father in heaven. And then your heart says, <laughs> remember this morning when you left the home? Remember? Remember? And you says, yeah. Your next sentence is, oh God. You were just now, oh Father. Now it's, oh God. The fact that you switch from father to God shows that you are now condemned. Because it's not father now, it's all sort of a God again. Huh? You know he's God, but I'm trying to push a point. Are you ready? Psalm 139. Verse 17. How precious and weighty <laughs> also are your thoughts to me, O oh God. Uh, just look at me, all ye holy saints. Come on. When Paul wrote the epistles, he said, to the saints in Ephesus, to the saints in Philippi, to the saints, oh, all ye saints, be greeted in the name of the Lord Jesus. So unto all the holy saints here in KwaZulu Natal, listen. He says, how precious and weighty, I'm reading amplified because it really is amplified, are your thoughts to me, O oh God, how vast is the sum of them. If I could count them, they would be more in number than the sand. When I awake, could I count it to the end, I would still be with you. So he says, not the acts, the thoughts of God towards me are so vast that all the sand on the earth if I count them they cannot even number the amount of thoughts of good things that God has towards me I didn't say deeds I didn't say manifestations I didn't say answers to prayers I said thoughts Jesus help us. You, we all know Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the thoughts that I have towards you, saith the Lord. To prosper you. To do you good. And to give you a prosperous future. Please, church. God says, if I think of you, this is what I think. I, I, I want to bless you. I, I want to heal you. I, I, I want to give to you. I want to anoint you. 
I want to equip you. I want to give to you. I want to help you. But the church stands with a begging mentality. Oh, Jesus, please, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, help me. I bind you, you wicked devil. Get off my finances. Now, by all the binding, how come that there's now more demons on your finances? So somewhere, somebody's missed it. The thoughts that God has towards you is so numerous that all the sand together cannot be weighed because God's thoughts towards you are weighty, heavier than all the sand and in number more than all the sand. Imagine if those thoughts would become realities. Please, church. So God is thinking good towards you. So how can I get the thoughts into reality? Verse 23. Search me thoroughly, O God, and know my heart. Now I'm going to put this in a different sense than you've ever heard it. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there's any wicked or hurtful way in me. And I want to put something, and then lead me in the way everlasting. Now, please hear it in a revelationary way tonight. What the psalmist says is, repeating what Jeremiah says, the heart is wicked and deceitful above all things. So the psalm writer said, please help me. I'm going to bless you right now. It's going to touch you. So he says, oh God, if I think of the thoughts that you have towards me, it's for good, it's for prosperity, it's for peace, it's for joy, it's for health, it's to bless me. But oh God, if you search my heart and find a wicked way, you see, we are religious. Search me, oh God, and try my heart today. See if there be some wicked way in me. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart today. The song writer didn't write it that way. I want to tell it out of the context. He said, God, if you would search my heart, the only thing you will find there is wickedness. And it condemns me out of your presence. It condemns me and robs me of my boldness. So God, after I found out that my heart is wicked in any case, won't you come and lead me the other way, away from a condemning heart to a way of boldness in your presence? Come on, get the revelation, somebody. So God, my heart is wicked. Above all things. Search me, O oh Lord. Cut the song off, you religious man. Say, I know my heart is wrong. Okay, now there's some religious people. I can feel it attacking me. I can even see the wings are painted white. Saying, because my heart is right before God. Oh yeah, oh yeah. The minute you start trusting your own heart, it's waiting for you around the next corner to condemn you the same way it made you righteous now. All our righteousness are as filthy rags in his sight. But God made him who knew no sin that we can become the righteousness of God in Christ. So the minute I trust my heart, the same trust that you had now, you can write it on your little Bible. The same trust that you had in your heart now, that same trust is going to turn into condemnation around the next corner. This is not good preaching, Kubus. No, it's prophesying. Look me in the eye. Remember the day you trusted your heart and you felt, well, my heart is right. 
I did it from a good heart. Those people are the people that suffer the most with condemnation. Because they're on the next corner, they miss it. So the same heart that justified them will now convict them and condemn them. And they will feel, oh. I had to learn this many different type of ways. But God showed me this vision one day. When everything goes A-OK, maybe you've heard me say this, but this is so powerful. You get up and everything is smooth. You feel good. There's no headaches. The breakfast is already there. Everything goes smooth. There's no traffic jams. Everything goes fine. There's more than enough money. Tonight you go to bed. You pray like this. Dear Father, we thank you for this awesome day we had. Oh God, now we want to pray, oh God, tomorrow that you will help us with that new agreement, that thing that must be signed. Father, we stand together in Jesus' name. Oh God, thank you for blessing little John today with that new car. God, we thank you. We thank you, oh Lord. We thank you for this. Oh Father, we pray. And good night, my love. Good night, bless you. Tomorrow you stand up. The breakfast is not ready. There's a traffic jam and you are involved in it. You get to work and they deduct it more than they're supposed to deduct and you don't get even a check out. You know, and then you miss it and you start adding to your vocabulary adjectives that doesn't sound nice in church. <laughs> and you paint the pictures when you talk the language. You remember? 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 No, of course you never had that day, but this is a message to help somebody that goes through it. It's not for you, of course. No, it is for you. Now tonight you go to bed. You pray like this. Oh God, Lord, I want to ask forgiveness today. Lord, God, I've missed it again. Oh, why don't you, our Father now? Come on, anybody in there. Why don't you, when it goes back, why don't you now, our Father, we thank you. Why now all of a sudden, oh God, we just want to say, Lord, God, today, Lord, I've missed it again. And I ask. So God is still dependent on your actions if you behave well you're blessed if you behave bad you're not blessed so god is not the sole agent in your blessings you become the active party and if my heart condemns me blessings are cut off if my heart is good oh yeah blessings will come <laughs> i dare you laugh you involved in this story your name couldn't be in it, you know. This is my son. If he be as bad or good, he's my son. You ask him, he's blessed. Do you think God is able to bless you? I don't know where we came to this message tonight. But I think it's still great. The thoughts that God has is so numerous in number that the sand count it will not outweigh it but do we see manifestations of the thoughts why don't we see it Quibus? because of condemning hearts why do our hearts condemn us because we think we are part of the agreement to get the blessings and we haven't got our eyes solely fixed on jesus who is the author, finisher of it. He paid that price alone. He didn't ask you to hang with him on the cross. But you know when he died, he said, you now died with me. Okay, so the psalm writer says, if I now know my heart is wicked, lead me in another way. Hebrews chapter 10. I said four. Let's do four first and then 10 and then close. Verse 16. I'll read the Amplified and the King James. Let us then fearlessly, confidently, and boldly. Thank you, you heard the word boldly there. Draw near to the throne of? What throne has God got? The throne of God's unmerited favor to us. Uh -huh. So that we may receive mercy for our failures and find grace to help in good time for every need. Appropriate help, well-timed help coming just when we need it. 
So, Church of the Lord Jesus Christ, all you holy saints in KwaZulu Natal, we need boldness to go to the throne. Throne talks about rulership, kingship, authority, power. This throne is a throne of grace. If I realize it's grace, the thing that will come to me is mercy. When I take the mercy, what will spring out of that is grace. So he says, it's not by might nor by power, say the Lord of hosts, Zechariah 4 verse 6, but by my spirit, say the Lord of hosts. What is, verse 7, this great mountain? Remember Mark eleven twenty two. What is this great mountain before you, O Zerubbabel? Speak unto it, grace, grace. So if I wanted the first grace and the second grace, I got to understand the mercy in between. The first grace is understand that it's a throne of grace. If I understand that the thing I will find if I go not by my merits, but by his grace, I will receive mercy. Mercy will tell me you can now find grace. Do you know what mercy is? When you are under the power of somebody and he's about to speak out a sentence on you because you are guilty. And he says, uh, I'm going to let you go. That's mercy. Grace is, I'm going to give you what you don't deserve. Mercy said, I'm going to let you go even if you don't deserve it. Okay? Mercy is, you are guilty but I set you free. Grace is, I'm going to give you, although you don't deserve it. Okay? So I got to get mercy to find grace. That's why when Moses said, if I have found grace, show me your glory. Then God said, my goodness will pass before you because I'm merciful. And then Moses said, because I now found grace, show me your glory. And God appeared to him face to face. And this is how God showed it to me early in our ministry. There's my wife when I explained to her. I was one day going and saying, oh God, I'm so wicked. God says, you're wrong. You're worse. <laughs> I said, God, I'm so evil. He said, no, you're wrong. You're worse. He says, that's why I sent my son. And it shocked me to the core of my existence. And this is what God said. And I will never forget it. He said, you can't be good enough to deserve it. You can't be bad enough to miss it. You can only get it by believing it. So my gift to you is grace, unmerited favor. Your gift back to me, Ronnie, is belief. Not faith. Faith is my gift to you. By faith we are saved through grace and that's a gift. So God gives you faith to have grace, but you must give something back to God. That's belief. A simple word for belief is trust. Okay? Shall we close? Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19. Therefore, brethren, since we have full freedom and confidence, King James would say boldness, to enter the holy of holies, which is the throne, by the power and virtue in the blood of Jesus, by this fresh, new, and living way, God, search my heart. And if there's any wicked way, teach me the way everlasting. So what I'm saying is, God, my heart condemns me. Help me to find the way into the Holy of Holies, he says, by the blood. Amen. Through the sun, through the veil, the flesh rented for you. Come on which he initiated and dedicated, which he opened for us through the separating curtain, the veil of the holy, that is through his flesh. And since we have such a great and wonderful and noble priest over the house of God, let us come forward, draw near with a true heart, in full assurance, unqualified assurance, absolute conviction engendered by faith, total trust in God's personality, absolute trust and confidence in his power. The heart is wicked. It's going to condemn you. So let's get the other way. The blood of Jesus.
What's the blood? It says his body was ripped apart. What did that do? It opened the heavens. Opened the veil. Now I can boldly go into the Holy of Holies and call God Father. In Jesus' name. Because of the blood. Your thoughts towards me are blessings, goodness, mercy, grace, health, everything that's good. But now I want the manifestation. Your heart says, hey, you evil thing. He says, of course. God, thank you for the blood. Your heart says, you stupid idiot. You know what you did 10 o'clock this morning? I know. But you know what he did 2,000 years ago? You know what he did when he died on the cross? And your heart says, no, 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 no. So you've got to overrule your condemning heart by boldness, not in what you did right or what you did wrong, but in boldness in what he did when he died on the cross. So I want to know nothing amongst you except Christ and him crucified. If I know the price he paid, how would it be difficult to get anything? Hey guys, please remember to click the subscribe button on your screen so that we can inform you when we're uploading more content and we have a full library of content to be uploaded, so you're going to be blessed by that. Remember to click subscribe. Bless you.